Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Harmon Homestead. Let's go on a full garden tour today. All right, so I'm going to start right here at the poor man's raised bed landscape border. Look at this that I planted in three weeks ago. Guys, it's rocking and rolling. Looks beautiful. So right here, we have bunching onions. You can see. Got them everywhere. And remember, I just mixed all this up. I've got some carrots back here. I have calendula, pansies, or either violets. I can't remember. I'd have to go back on the video. More bunching onions. Look at that. And this is our landscape. I've got calendula mixed in with kale. Some more calendula. I've got sage over here. I don't think it's sprouted yet. Look at this over here. Carrots. We've got sunflowers in the very back, right there. Then we've got some more, I think that's some kind of kale, not sure. Carrots everywhere, everywhere. Salad mix, I'm gonna pan out so you can see this. Look at all the salad mix in there. Then I've got some kale, I've got carrots. Then I went back, look at this. It won't be long before this is ready. And this is right here at my house. And this is our landscape border, an edible landscape border. So I went back and planted some tomatoes. This right here is a Kellogg's breakfast. They were not hardened off. They're a little bit sunburnt, but they're gonna get shade. They're pulling through. They've been in the ground for about a week. I've got bunching onions all throughout there. And then I stopped. That's the last I videoed with you guys about the landscape border. So let me tell you what I've planted. I went through here and planted hyssop. I've got all sorts of stuff in here. I've got zinnias. I've got chives. This right here is a Paul Robeson tomato. They look rough. I know, but they're, they're not dying yet. They're okay. I've got a lilac bell pepper. And then at the back, up against the brick, I planted one row of Indian corn. I think it'll be good. I think it'll add some, some height to that. Well, it's already high, but I think it'll kind of fill in the gap. Then I've got a huge area of okra. I mix Clemson spineless okra with red burgundy okra. I would like to see how that goes and seed save off of that and get maybe a uh, multicolored okra. Maybe just some green with some red stripes in it. Um, kind of like the Alabama red. So we're going to try that. I've just got tons of it through there. Then I start with pumpkins all along the border and I'm going to let them run down to the edge. I've got three mounds of Jahardell pumpkins. Nothing has sprouted yet. I've got borage mixed in. Borage does great with pumpkins. Got another mound, and then I have basil. So over here, this one's looking very rough. I, I still think he'll pull through. This right here is a Floridade tomato. It's supposed to take heat, it's supposed to take humidity. I just didn't harden these off. That's my own fault. I still think they'll pull through. And I'll show you the ones in my raised bed. They're doing great. I've got a big red bell pepper. And all around here, in between these two tomatoes and around in a box shape, you can still see where I planted it, I have borage. We've got zinnias everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. I've got another bell pepper here. This is a just big bell pepper. It's one we bought. And then I have a Bonnie Best tomato there. So all this is starting flowers. I planted some lavender. I've got some more chives by that tomato. Then this is my curve with the poor man's raised bed right here. I've got sunflowers in the very back, up against the wall back there, and then tons of zinnias. Then you're starting to walk around to the shaded part and see this loops in with the cottage garden. We finished it. So I went and planted in this shady spot, kale and lettuce everywhere. And look at that, it's sprouting today. Today is day six, looks awesome. We've got little sprouts coming up everywhere. So it's partly sunny here, partly shaded in the morning, but most of the day is shaded. This right here gets sunlight in the afternoon towards the middle and front. I planted okra everywhere in with salad. And you can see, I mean, we've got sprouts. Let me find some everywhere, everywhere. The okra is gonna take a while because the ground's not warm enough yet. A lot of people I, I ask like, hey, what can I plant in the shade? I've got some volunteer ferns over there. It's just, you can see the brick. It's so just damp right here. 
I feel like the okra might pull through. I know the, the salad and lettuce will and the kale. So there's that. Now let's start our cottage garden. So I told you guys that I wanted to plant nothing but flowers. This is a two part garden. It extends over on that side. I finished the first part. The second part's already kind of done. Um, I need to put a border up though. I'm gonna plant my flowers over there past the walkway. This is all gonna be a vegetable garden. I know, I know. I may go back next year and do it in flowers. I just didn't this year. I've mixed it up. So I've got one huge long row of zinnias. I've got red, I've got candy cane. I've got all sorts of stuff mixed in right here. Then I've got a long row of bell pepper. You can still see my cup sitting out. I've got two black brandy wine tomatoes and they are looking very good. Those were not hardened off, but they've been in the shade and the rain every day. Then I have a Kellogg's breakfast and a Perron sprayless. That's supposed to be like your perfect greenhouse tomato that's disease resistant. So we come down through here and I have borage, or no, I'm sorry, I've got echinacea. And I've got, ooh, I've got this uh, cherry tomato I have got to plant. So let me kind of step over in here. I meant to plant him there and ooh, he is wilted bad. We bought him and something's happened. I've got to get him in the ground. Um, then I went back through here and on the rock wall, we still haven't finished it all the way. I've got to add some rock here, but I planted alyssum, if that's how you say it. Went up through here and I did three, four mounds, three mounds, I think, of Long Island cheese pumpkins. I did a row of blue Hopi corn, vertical. This is all vertical, even though the house is pouring this way, long way, it's horizontal. I did a row of blue Hopi corn and then a row of green oxycan dent corn. I stopped here, I've not finished it. This was my last video where I showed you guys planting in the cages. I'm gonna come up here so I can show you. See, there's a little walkway here. All this has not been planted in. Here are my six better boy tomatoes around the cage. They look good, look really good after all that rain. Then we've got our cucumbers, zucchini, and then our Connecticut filled pumpkin to wind up those cages. So that's what we've got so far. I've got that much left to plant, and then I've got the other side that I'm going to do the flower garden in. It's just what I wanted to do this year. I want to mix flowers and vegetables right here. I was so excited about it. So we're going to try it and see. And the front of the house, guys, it, it you can see it looping around. It ties it all in. It's beautiful. I, I love it. I personally love this more than I ever thought that I would. And I think by the time we get vegetables growing in here, it's going to be stunning. Remember, this border was all free. What I filled it in with was free. What I built it with, the mimosa was free. Everything's free. It was all free. All right, so I took a minute and I planted that tomato and watered him in really well. I didn't want to lose it. So this was the original poor man's raised bed. This right here, guys, remember I started with the wall. We painted the block wall. Um, we've done a lot. We've done a lot. This is made with pine logs. This is what we have planted so far. I'm just waiting for everything to germinate. I did two long rows of Indian corn up against this wall. And then you look straight there and I'll have my cottage garden here. And then back there's all my vegetable plants. I think it will be very, very pretty guys. So we've got that. Then I started with Better Boy tomatoes. I already had some kale that I threw in the ground. It was already here, it was doing. So I intercropped around these tomato plants. So I planted the tomato plants around the kale. And then that's all inside the cage. I went around the base of this tomato plant and planted carrots. I've done um, lettuce. I just alternated back and forth throughout all of these. I've got my dinosaur kale down here. He looks really good. I've got a premier kale and then the tomato plant in the center. So if you guys see, and I've got one Cherokee purple that was not hardened off, but look at him. He's, oh, he's pretty. He's tall too, very tall. So if y'all see here, I have volunteer sunflowers. When I built this bed, I used chicken manure. That was up under the pen. It had feed in it, some chicken feed. Chicken feed has sunflowers in it. So that's what these are. I'm gonna let them come on up. I think it'll be pretty. They're gonna be probably small yellow sunflowers, but I still think it will be good. Now, if you, I've got a few little pieces of wheat that sprouted in with that too. And we had a ton. I had to come through here and pick it out so that's why the garden looks so irregular is I let some volunteers stay, planted some stuff, waiting on other stuff to germinate. Now I transplanted peas in here, English peas. My ducks ate them. When they tell you ducks can go through your garden, they won't bother a thing. Well, mine have tore stuff up. So 
this is what's left and I, um, I let them be because they're throwing nitrogen into the soil. So what I did here is in these, this huge horizontal bed, I did three horizontal rows. Back row back here, contender bush beans. And contender guys are also called provider. A lot of you see provider bush beans, they're the same thing. Contender and provider, I call them contender. Then I have two more rows. So essentially I've got three rows of bush beans, but on the back row, I planted in with the row, just down in the row, Atlantic giant pumpkins. So all around those pumpkins is nothing but nitrogen. That's how I did it. Um, I've got bush beans that are sprouting. It rains so heavy. A lot of my beans washed up. If you can see, they're popping on up out of that shell. So I'm, I, I planted this really heavy, really heavy. So if I see beans on top, I'm not sweating it at all because I know how many are up under the soil. I just hope that my pumpkins will come up in there as well. So if you can see just so far around the property, now this bed is long, it's big. Um, I've encompassed the entire property with edible gardening. This is all free. This was logs that I cut, made mimosa stobs to keep it in, filled it in with mulch, manure. That's it. That's it. And you can see stuff will grow in it. Obviously, look here. So, that's that. Now let me show you the main two beds. Start on the back side over here by the chicken pens. These are all <laughs> tall telephone peas, and then at the bottom, early Alaska. And I'm gonna kind of walk into the bed here. Look at this. This garden is just out of control. So, it's doing very, very well. English peas are gorgeous, gorgeous. I just wish that they would make peas quicker. <laughs> these peas have been on these plants for two weeks and they're still nowhere near filled in yet, but these are the tall telephones. Um, they're growing every day. Two days ago, he was reaching towards the top of the cattle panel and now you can see him. So they're growing and they're doing well, but it's taking a long time for these to fill in. The only thing I don't like about these peas I'm sorry the rooster's growing, guys. It's early morning. The only thing I don't like is I can't see these. I cannot. I know you can get a purple variety, but I was just trying to get them to grow this year. Um, it's, it's hard to see these everywhere, and the whole plant's covered in them. All these are. Now, the early Alaska are not near as tall. They're not, but they're, they're blooming their little hearts out, and then I've got some at the bottom. I left my tarps out. Now they're predicting a possible frost next weekend. I think all this will be fine, but we've got so much. Guys, it is what it is. We're gonna get the tarps up today. So there's my Cimarron lettuce beside my bull's blood beets. If you want the most beautiful beets ever, if anything, the leaves. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I've got my onions here, Texas Grano. They've got blooms coming up. If you guys can see, I, I can't help it. I don't know what I did wrong there. Um, black seeded Simpson lettuce. Guys, this stuff is halfway up my leg. Like it's, it's humongous. And then I've got my regular Detroit red beets. And the stems. Look at this. Look at this. It's just, it's like Swiss chard. It's the most beautiful, which I think that's a relation to the beet. If you don't make beet bottoms, okay? If they don't form a root, don't sweat it. All this is edible and it's good. Okay, it's real good. So there's that. I can't get over the black suited Simpson. It's, it's really out of control. I don't know how I'm gonna eat all this. I've eaten salads twice a day, um, incorporated it into cooking. The only thing I know to do with this lettuce before the heat gets it is dehydrate it. And I may do that to add it to smoothies. I don't know what else to do because if you freeze it, it's, it's no good. Okay, let's talk about intercropping. Look at these tomato plants. Remember, I didn't harden these off either. They looked half dead on the last video, and now they are beautiful. So I've got four better boys, and then my colored tomatoes at the bottom. Look at the lettuce. It is beautiful, and that's how I wanted it. I wanted it thick, I wanted it covering the ground. That way there's no weeds. That's exactly what I wanted exactly what I wanted all throughout here. Look at this one. This tomato I thought was just a goner, but he's pulled through. You just, if you get shade on them, they're okay. 
It's been cloudy and rainy. That's why I gambled that, and it, it proved good. So, got all of that. I am so pleased with that lettuce. I think it'll shade the bottoms of the plants, and I am going to spray copper on these today because now they're starting to look good. I think they'll tolerate a substance being put on them. Copper to prevent blight. Need to do that when you transplant your, your tomato plants to prevent blight. Okay, let's talk about these cabbages. We've got major problems. So you can see the holes in the cabbages here. I did a video on cabbage loopers and cabbage worms. The cabbages are growing. They look good, but they're getting eaten. He's not far from being picked. He's not. I sprayed it with BT and seven dust. That plant I sprayed with both. It's still getting eaten. I found on one of my lettuce leaves over here the other day inside a small slug. So now I'm wondering if it's slugs. I don't know, but whatever it is, is working fast and furious on all of my cabbages in this bed. That bed's not bad. This bed is getting tore up by these whatever it is. I come out here at four o'clock in the morning with a flashlight. They say slugs feed at night and in the early morning. I've checked every early morning. Can't find a thing. Can't find it. Um, I mean, it's still beautiful, guys. But I couldn't find anything. So I don't know. So I think that I'm going to try to get some organic slug stuff. I tried the um, liquid yeast trap. That did not work. Not one bit. I put it out yesterday. In fact, I filmed that, but it never would upload. So I just deleted the upload. Um, I took a pan. I put some alcohol in it and tried to attract the slugs that way nothing so now i'm wondering is it not slugs i don't know um so i don't know what's going on some of these plants are beautiful i'm i'm worried though about my cabbages because the damage is getting worse and like i said this is an experiment some of these i did bt some i did seven dust neither worked neither my broccoli and cauliflower over here has a little damage but nothing nothing bad at all um, but there's the cabbages. They're starting on my red acre now. It's, it's like it's worse the further south I get in the garden. That poor plant is terrible. So I don't know, guys. Um, if you've got any suggestions, let me know. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try the organic slug poison because I saw that you could use something called metaldehyde, but it's poisonous to animals. If they even eat one ounce, if you put it in your garden, it can be fatal. Um, look at him. He is, oh, he is so pretty. So, I don't want to do that because we've got the outside cats. And I don't know. I really don't know. Um, but we're going to try to amend this today. I've tried the eggshells around the plants. I've tried, uh, coffee grounds to see if that would deter the slugs. It is, I don't know. I don't think I've got a slug problem. I don't know. You think at this point I would say the cabbage worms are loopers. I don't know. So, we'll see. We're going to give it all we got tonight. I'll probably put all three out here organic slug poison bt and seven dust i don't know what else to do i can't lose my crop this far along because it's too beautiful okay at the bottom let's talk about some good news i've got my peas back there now there is a small gap here if you can see on april the first i went between these cabbages and this lettuce and as as tight as i could i planted contender bush beans it's going to throw nitrogen all this lettuce if you can tell there's a difference between that that's more tall and loose this is short and crinkly it's gorgeous this is slow bolt loose leaf lettuce very good very good all this is and if you can see here i had cimarron tucked in it's, it's doing great um but I planted bush beans all through here. Now, over here on this side, I've got one volunteer sunflower. He's going to be a red one, I think. And I've got Marvel of Four Seasons head lettuce. There's a few. I'm letting make heads just for the time being. And then, but I've got my bush beans. I planted some squash on the border, trying to rotate in my garden and just seeing if it would come up. Got a little squash plant coming up right over there. But it's taken a while because the temps have been cool. So on the outside here, I've got my slow bolt. I don't know how it got mixed in. I, it rained after I planted all this in February. I don't know what happened up here. It's like it went upwards. <laughs> so maybe I had, had it in my hand. I don't know. But I've got Marvel of Four Seasons head lettuce, my onions, um, and then I have crisp mint romaine. If all this is cauliflower, looking good, and then some broccoli. 
So let me get over here to this crisp mint romaine. At the very top here, I had radishes. And that's where I planted all the bush beans is where I had radishes and I took them up. So I just filled in that space with nitrogen providers. Um, this lettuce right here, this crisp mint romaine that grows upright, I would recommend this to anybody because A, the flavor is impeccable. B, if you'll notice, compared to that slow bolt loose leaf, see how it, it flaps out and hits the ground, touches the ground, this grows upright. So if you've got a lot of rain, if you've got pests, this is better because it's up off the ground. It grows vertically. Everything else grows horizontally and it wants to flap out. Um, the black seeded Simpson kind of grows upwards. So does the Cimarron, anything vertically growing. I think all these lettuces combined are just absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's get on over in here. These are my ooh, early Alaska peas. As you can see, peas do better with support but they don't need it. They've pretty much used my kale. This is a slow bolt that popped up, slow bolt loose leaf lettuce. This is this inner cropping. This was by accident. This is where I got this idea. It's done beautifully. This is all black magic kale. Guys, at a huge grocery store the other day, there were five leaves of kale for $5. That was the dinosaur kale. Um, this was a packet of 200 seeds for $1.40. So I'm just saying so cheap to grow your own food compared to buying it at the store especially with these prices now i've got something that's popped up in between these rows these are all contender bush beans i planted them there to give nitrogen all this will be done by the time they're they're needing to have room got cabbages everywhere and some premier kale mixed in i was just letting it grow i'm gonna pull this on up though um i think it's time i just want it to i'm trying to phase this out into the summer garden the good thing about kale is though it'll last in the heat. So I've kind of let it ride, but it's it's kind of taking over my cabbage rows. I've got a middle row of contender bush beans here coming up all the way through, if you can see. And then another row over here behind my broccoli. So these cabbages were not pest ridden like the other side. So I don't know what's going on. The broccoli is huge. It's humongous. It's up to my hip if I stand beside it. Um, we've got broccoli everywhere. This is my biggest one. He's even getting side shoots. I don't think it'll be too much longer before we're ready to start picking. But if you can see, there's the side shoots up under there. Um, it's kind of like it's protecting itself. It's supposed to be warm. So it's, it's just naturally covering the heads up. This one, it fell over. The winds were so high here. I tried to stand them back up. I'm letting the Letting them just kind of pull themselves up toward the sun. If you can see back there, I've got contender bush beans everywhere in here. This is a mess, I know. Here's my English peas, but it's all cohesive, guys. This bed by far is my favorite compared to that one. Less pest pressure. So over here, I've got my banana peppers I showed you guys. I've got nothing that's sprouted yet. Um, these red acre cabbage are just beautiful. Got my cauliflower. I've got five or six right through here. Just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that's our garden tour. Guys, we've got a lot going on. We're waiting on stuff to germinate. We're seeing growth. We've got a lot, a lot of good eating here. All right, guys, we'll see you next time on Harmon Homestead.